Hi there! Welcome to Elm Colors. I'm Erica and today I'm going to show you all how I use ink tents. I had a lovely subscriber ask me to do a tutorial about these. Um, let me start by saying that I am not an expert, far from it, but I can show you how I use them and I hope that that will help anybody that's watching today. So let's get started. Okay, so I wanted to start with showing my favorite page that I've ever done using just ink tents. Um, and this is in the Romantic Country book by Erie. And it's this um, village patisserie page. Um, I was really impressed with how I was able to use multiple colors to blend them all together and get interesting effects. So for example, on the brickwork, all the brickwork and in this sign here, I used multiple colors together and um, they created just this really neat look. Um, I will say that when I first started using the ink tents in this book, I was very worried because it did not want to cooperate with me very well. And I know a lot of people have struggled to use water mediums in this book, and I think the second and third one as well. But you just have to keep playing with it. You have to let it dry, be patient, keep playing with it. Um, so I have done a couple of others, and I have shown these in my collection videos, but I thought I'd talk about a little bit about these ones as well. So this is another one I did, and this one I was a little bit more impatient with. I decided that I just wanted to get the color down. So on the things like these, um, the red curtain, the red check curtains and the flowers and these yellow curtains, I probably could have taken my time and done a little bit of a better job at blending and things, but it's done, it's in there. Um, this side was all done with ink tents as well. Um, the background actually might be Neo color possibly. Um, but this whole doubles page spread is all ink tents, um, except for a little bit of silver gel pen on some of the metal window frames and um, this little stand here. Um, but everything else is ink tents and it was just, it was a really fun page to do. Um, and again, I was just, I was happy with the fact that I was able to blend things and and get the desired look that I was going for. So those are really the main pages that I have used my ink tents on. Um, and I wanted to show you a little bit of um, a tutorial-ish in this book and then um, another one in a, on another different type of paper. And then I thought maybe I would work in the magical journey a little bit since that is one of my 10 books to color in in 2021. So let me find a page and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I'm gonna work a little bit on this page here. And you can see um, and when I talked in my collection video, um, I talked about how I have this blue color kind of spread throughout the book. So that was a marker that I have done, but I'm gonna do some more, some different things on here with um, my ink tents. Now I do wanna share a few things that I've learned about ink tents, um, just from trial and error and, you know, kind of just facts, random facts that are out there. These are permanent. So once you color with them, once you put the paper or the color onto the paper, it's there. Whether you add water to it or not, you really, you can't erase it. <laughs> It's, it's there. You can sometimes lighten the color if you work quickly. Um, once you get it wet, you can come in with a paper towel and um, like blot the color away, but there's still gonna be pigment there. Um, they blend beautifully. And the fun thing, the reason that I have not um, expanded my collection is I can combine different colors to make a new color. So any color that I need, I can use my color theory and combine the colors to make the color that I need. Um, one of the best ways to work with these is once you use these pencils similarly to how you would use just regular colored pencils. So you'll go in and you'll have your highlight areas and your shadow areas and you do want to use the pencils and, and add those details in and then when you add the water you want to start in the lighter areas first and work towards your darkest areas. Um, 
Another thing to remember is to always have a paper towel or a scratch piece of scratch paper with you so that you can clean your brush in between colors. Um, these are super vibrant colors, um, but you can achieve very light, soft colors if you use them in a specific way. And I'll show you one of the ways, a couple of different ways that I, that I do that. Um, and I do believe that you can buy these in open stock. Um, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I tend to buy things in sets, so I have not done that yet. Um, I'm, I'm really eyeing the 72 set of these. Um, I just want all the colors just to have them at that time. I don't wanna have to buy them piecemeal, but um, I know a lot of people do build up their collections that way. Um, so you can check that out and if there's, you know, you just wanna try out a couple of pencils and you don't wanna invest in a whole set, um, I do think that you can get them um, individually. So I use water brushes like these. You can use um, paint brushes and a, and a cup of water with this just as well, um, but I really like the way that these work. Um, I like that my water is in here already. I don't have to keep dipping and going back and forth. Um, now I'm gonna show you a couple of different tips. So these two are ones that actually look decent. So I have this thin one. This is the one that I'll use for most of my detail work and anything that um, requires me to get into a small space. And then I have the big guy here. <laughs> the tips are a little bit frayed because I use these quite often. Um, but I'll use this for larger areas to fill in, to get it painted rather quickly. And I just wanted to show you guys this one too. This one <laughs> looks crazy, <laughs> but um, it's a really good one, again, for larger areas, but it also creates a really cool effect um, when you want it to be dappled. So kind of like if you were gonna do this grass down here, um, you go over it with a solid color and then you can come back in and add more color on top. Oh, well, that's another fact actually, is that um, since it's permanent, once the color is down, you can add more color on top of it and build it up. So a good thing to remember is to always start lighter than you think you might need and then work up to the amount of um, color that you want. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to turn my page. Sorry about that. I know that it's a little awkward sometimes. I think I'm gonna do, um, just so you guys can see, I'm gonna do one of these little bows. So I'm gonna say, let's make this bow, let's just make it blue. I'm gonna make it blue because I know that the background is gonna be like a, a sunset sunrise kind of sky. So if I made that pink, it wouldn't really stand out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot for a blue. So I've got my color chart here, my poor little old color chart. Um, and I think I'm gonna go with the sea blue. So it's this color here. It's, it's a nice, I don't know if you can see it on there. It's kind of, it's almost a turquoisey color. Um, so when I, when I go in first, I'm gonna figure out where my shadows will be. So of course it's, there's gonna be some shadow in this area. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna have heavier pressure in this section of the bow. And then as I move out, I'm gonna lighten that pressure up until it's almost non-existent on the page. Do the same thing here. This is kind of what I would be doing if I was just using a regular colored pencil anyway. You don't have to be as precise with your strokes using the ink tents because it is gonna fill up. So again, I'm gonna put a lot of color down at the bottom, a little bit, a lot of color at the top, and I might not even add any in the middle because that'll spread throughout there really well. Um, and then here I'm gonna put some color here and a little bit out from the center. And I'm gonna do one line of color just right at the end. And again, out from the center point here. I'm 
add a little bit out into the bow a little bit more because that's a large empty space there. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in with my water brush and I'm gonna start in the lightest areas and with a small circular motion, I'm just gonna apply the water. So once I get to where that, there was a lot of ink, because um, these are ink, they're not, it's not like watercolor, but when I get up in the corner where there was a lot of ink, you can see how much my brush picks up. So then I can come back in, clean off my, I cleaned off my brush a little bit, and then it, you can blend it some more. So again, I'll show you here. So you start in the lightest area and work your way towards the darkest. And that's a lot of ink. So then once you blend it out a little bit, you come back in with a clean tip and you can make it look so it's a nice, get a nice gradient there. So this center part is gonna be a little tricky because it's so tiny. I probably should have done that a different way, but that worked, that worked. Okay, and again, I'm gonna start in the lighter area and work towards the center of the bow. And then for this line, I'm just gonna go right over top of it and then pull it a little bit towards. And that creates like that round effect, I think. Okay, so again here, we're gonna start in the white area and work towards the center of the bow. And you can kind of see when you start in that white area, you've got that water already there so the ink can kind of just move into the wet, which is pretty cool. Okay, so there's our little bow. Now another way to do that is you can take the color directly from the pencil. So you just brush the um, brush, <laughs> rub the brush on the tip of the pencil, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I've got quite a bit of ink on the end of that now. Um, and I usually dab a little bit off, and then I'm gonna start opposite this time. So I'm gonna start in my darkest area, and I got a little bit too much, and then I'm gonna work outward from there. And again, I'm gonna get a little bit of So you can see how vibrant that can be. You do have to work rather quickly with these. You can't just set it and, and go from there. You have to stay on top of it. So I'm gonna... Sit on a little bit. And you can see the difference um, in from this bow to this bow. Where I colored the hardest, it's super dark still, even after going in with the water. You do have to sometimes be careful of how hard you push with your pencil because the strokes sometimes won't dissolve completely. And that's not always the look you're going for, so. Okay, so I've got a little bit of 
dark in here where I don't necessarily want, so I'm going to try to offset it a little bit. Some of that. There we go. And I'm going to add a little bit. Once this is dry-ish, it doesn't have to be completely dry, but you do want to try not to work um, with another color on this wet while it's still wet because then it'll absorb that color as well. Um, so I've got that little bit on my brush, so I'm just going to add a little touch of color in these corners to deepen that color up a little bit. There's that one. Okay, mm, I want a little bit darker up here. There we go. Okay, there. And I, I actually kind of like that one better. I do a lot of the times I'll switch around. Sometimes I'll take it straight from the pencil, sometimes I'll put it on the page. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of color to where this line is and just kind of bring it back towards the center because I didn't like quite how dark that was. So I'm gonna There we go. Okay. So there's my little bows. Um, and I thought that I would kind of show you how I was planning to do the background. But what I'll do is I'll show you the colors first that I'm thinking of using. So I'm gonna use a little bit of sun yellow um, for some of the sun here, some tangerine. Then I've got this really pretty fuchsia color and violet. So I'm gonna use these four pencils and try to create kind of like a sunset type sky in the background. Um, and I'll do that on camera and speed it up so you guys can see what I'm doing. And, um, oh, one thing I do wanna say. So anytime you use water medium, whether it's Inktense pencils, watercolors, um, Neo Color 2s, even water-based markers sometimes, whenever you use those kind of mediums in your coloring books, the paper's gonna warp. It just happens. Um, but, so I don't know if you can see, I'm hoping you can see a little bit of that right here where I put those bows. Um, it's very faint. And this will eventually flatten out. Um, but that is going to happen no matter what book you're coloring in because this is not, unless it's specifically made from watercolor paper. Um, these papers are not meant to have a lot of water on them. So when they get that water, they stretch and bend and the paper does, I don't know all the technical terms, but it, it warps. Um, and... If you're not okay with that, then maybe water mediums are not your, your gonna be your material of choice. But I am fine with that, especially so after it sits for a while. Let's see. So I don't know if you can see um, kind of the wrinkles in this page, but that was from doing this page. And I really love the way this one turned out. And I'm okay if this back side is a little bit wrinkled because when I color this side, it's gonna flatten out anyway. And like you've seen, you know, these other ones, this one was completely, it was, everything was water and it's perfectly fine now. So, so yeah, so you might think that you've messed it up or that you've ruined your page and I promise you, you haven't yet. So uh, I'm gonna do this background sky and show you guys kinda how I do that and then um, I'll be right back with ya. Okay, I am gonna add in another um, 
material here. And this is easy to do with the um, Neo colors. I'm going to add in some Neo color in here to transition between this orange color and this pink, other pink color that I have. So I'm going to use this um, salmon Neo color too, and this um, pink. I think it's just pink. Uh, Neo color too. You can also use other watercolor pencils as well. Um, Crayola makes a brand. Um, you don't have to spend a ton of money. Arteza makes a brand of watercolor pencils. You don't have to spend a ton of money on those um, unless you're using them for like artistic purposes or you want the color to last forever and ever and ever. Um, I use the Arteza color pencils quite often and I also have this really old, this other really old set, this Stampin' Up set that I use sometimes. Um, but mainly I use the Ink Tense and the Neo Color 2s, and that's how I get a lot of my water effects or watercolor effects. Okay, so I'm going to get back to coloring. I'm going to use this salmon next and then go into this pink. Okay, so I've got that all colored in. I hope you can see some of that. I'll move that up to the, it's not neat. It's not <laughs> pretty at all, especially with the Neo colors, um, like around in here, I've gone over leaves and stuff and flowers. You don't have to worry so much with the Neo colors, but you can tell with the ink tents that I was very careful not to go over anything else, um, like any of these leaves or the tree branch or anything. Um, with the ink because like I said it's permanent but the neo colors you can rework a little bit so that's what it looks like before um, one of the things uh, that I realized I was doing as I was coloring was I wanted a really light color out of this pink and purple and these are typically pretty vibrant um, colors so I held the pencil back I don't know if you guys noticed this but I was holding it back really far um, on the barrel to prevent me, myself from having too heavy of a hand with it. Um, and so that's a, that's a good tip if you need a light coat of color to hold the barrel farther back. Okay, so I am going to get started with blending this with water and I will, again, I'm gonna start from my lightest and work up to my darkest and um, show you guys how I do that.
Okay, so there it is. My sky. Um, as you can see, the paper is curling. Um, which I said, like I said, it's it's gonna curl, it's gonna buckle, it's gonna do all the stuff. An easy way to fix it is to just bend it backwards and stretch the paper back out. Oh, that's what it does. The paper contracts when it gets wet, or when it dries, it stretches, and when it no, when it gets wet, it stretches. When it dries, it contracts. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm sure there's a more scientific explanation for what's happening to your paper, but I, all I know is that you can stretch the paper back out and then it, it behaves better. So, um, pretty, pretty easy. Um, you can see some of the places where I've got, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, so for example, right in here, I've got almost a hard line um, in some of these places. And to get a really decently smooth coverage, you can always go back over and add more color. Um, I'm not going to do that today. I'm probably, I probably will just leave it, and then I'm, I'll go in at some point and add some clouds into the background. Um, but I think it turned out really cute. Um, so I did want to show you how these react on another kind of paper. I do have, so this is Guardians of the Enchanted Forest by Forest Diver. This is an Amazon printed book, um, but this is a page where I have used ink tents. And yes, it buckles a little bit, but I mean, it's straightened out quite a bit. It's not any more than, um, I wonder if I've got one in here where I've done water-based markers. I don't think I have, I think everything else is alcohol. Oh no, that one's, so you can kind of, hear the, the crinkly paper a little bit. That that was water-based markers. Um, but it's kind of the same thing where you you can use the ink tents on here and it will behave relatively well as long as you don't add too much water. So you just really have to be aware of of that, of the amount of water. So I think what I was gonna do to show you guys is I was just gonna come in here and color some of these um, flowers that are on the, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of color at the center of these flowers. Now the water doesn't move as nicely on this paper. It tends to um, want to stay in the same place. I always put a backer paper in. Um, so you do kind of have to mess with it a little bit more. And for example, on the this part of the dragon's underbelly, I did have to be very conscious of where I was putting the darkest tones and the shades and stuff like that. So with just a little bit of color in the center of these, you can get now it's gonna look like a hot mess for a second, <laughs> but then it will, um, once it dries, then you don't have that weird color in the background. And so for this one, I didn't get quite as much as I want, so I'm gonna do that little trick where I, first I'm gonna test to make sure my water is coming out. It says, there it goes. Okay. And so I'm just going to grab a little bit from the tip, get my paper towel, and then just brush a little bit of that color onto this flower. And like I said, with these, you don't want to use too much water. So you can kind of see here the uh, on this rose where the it looks gray almost it looks almost like the colors blended in but that's just that back that black background showing through and it will end up drying and, and being cute like that um yeah let's do his little i'm gonna do his Fins? What are these? I don't know what they are. Do that. 
a couple of these guys on the sides. So you can use these. These, like I said, this is a it's a little bit different because this paper um, doesn't always want to cooperate with you. But let's do. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you this tree here. So because I don't have a color, the, the exact color that I want, I'm going to combine not that color. I'm going to combine my leaf green and my apple green. And I'm just gonna come in and color like I would normally with my color pencils. It doesn't like it doesn't have to be perfect, but um, I'm gonna leave a little area. But I am gonna go over the top of that leaf green with my apple green. Because it's a very vibrant color, that apple green, and so the leaf green really helps tone it down. Um, and actually, I'm just going to extend that leaf green color all the way to the tips. And instead of having it be lighter there, I'm going to make it darker. So I'm going to grab my um, sea blue again, and I'm going to just put a little bit of blue underneath where it would be darkest. Wherever there would be a little bit of a shadow. That's always a fun way to add um, shadow is to use other colors. I don't use, I sometimes will use gray, but I very rarely use um, black, very rarely use black. And again, I'm just going up into that color so that it blends at the last minute. So I'm gonna start down here, blend upwards into that blue and just kind of blends in there yeah. so there's my little tree Okay, so I think actually I'm going to do the magical journey maybe as a different, well, you know what? No, because I said I was going to do it, so let's do it. So we're just going to get some, we're going to pick a page and get some color down because I've got to, I have to color in this book. Um, let's find a relatively not crazy one because these tend to scare the heck out of me. Um, yeah, that one I could do. That's just leaves, and it says it's the Amazon. So let's do some, let's do a couple leaves. That way you can kind of see how I'll work in this book. So we'll do, we'll do this leaf right here. So again, I've got, um, if you look at the color chart, you've got this sherbet lemon here. That's kind of, it's more of a greeny um green yellow so i like to combine that a lot of the times with my greens um, and i typically use this leaf green to tone down the other greens so what i'll normally do is i'll have the sun yellow this apple green or field green um and then either and then do the teal green and then sometimes put the leaf green over all of it to kind of blend it together so what i think i will do this time is i want this to be pretty vibrant so instead of the apple green, I'm gonna use the field green. So we're gonna do sherbet lemon, field green, and teal green. And then again, I might use that sea blue as a shadow color. So I'm just gonna do like this area right here is gonna be my lightest area. So I'm just going to color that area in with the yellow. And maybe a little bit right in there. Um, and then I'll come in with the field green.
And then the teal. Right in that center section on the tip a little bit and then down here on the on the edges and then with this sea blue again I'm gonna go right where I think the shadows would be darkest so right down the center of this leaf um, actually I'm gonna add a little bit of dark there and a little bit of dark there and then right along the edge, just barely along the edge. Okay, so let's see how that works. This is my first time coloring this book. Here we go. My paper towel. And we're gonna start in the yellow. Start bringing the greens in. blend into that dark color okay and again bring in that green a little bit Then down into that teal green and that blue color. And while it's still wet, I like to come in and do a couple little dabs with a little bit of pigment on my brush because it will. All right, well that looks pretty good. So I just have to do all the rest of these leaves now in, <laughs> in that color scheme, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. The, the problem that I have with this book is I just don't know what a lot of it is. So like there's a whole bunch of these swirls in the background, and then there's bubbles everywhere, and I, I'll figure it out, I'm sure, but um, yeah, at least I have some color in this book now. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I hope I was able to help you. Um, understand the, the ink tense a little bit more and to the subscriber that uh, requested this I really hope that helped you um, so I think that's it for today and I thank you guys so much for watching and until next time I'll see you later bye <music>